Welcome to another video about therapeutic medical physics and whether you are interested in the shipping of radioactive materials or you're studying for your part three of your ABR exam, I want to welcome you as we cover some basic understandings of shipping radioactive materials and some questions that you may see on written or oral exams. So the first one would simply be to describe the procedure that uh, you undergo when you receive a radioactive package. So the first thing to note is that a AMP must sign for it. So this is just a general rule and AMP you should know the rules to become an authorized medical physicist and what that is. A two, you need to do a survey and a white test of that package within three hours of receiving it. And third, you just simply want to put this package in a safe place. Something also to note is that these, when shipping radioactive packages, the Department of Transportation is actually the one that governs that shipping of the byproduct. So if you have questions, you would need to contact someone in that department. So another question would simply be to what is in the picture? And I would ask you to reference the beginning of the video when I have better, uh, a better visual of the representation of a radioactive shipping package or label and describe the differences between them, the designations, readings, and things of that nature. So in the beginning of the video, I had a graphic where there were three diamonds. Those are the radioactive shipping labels. Here I just drew one as a rough sketch. And so the things to notice is that the, the labels are designed to define the caution in handling the radioactive material when shipping. So there are three categories. The first is white one. So you'll just notice they are all diamonds. The top of this diamond would be white and that corresponds to our radioactive one. And that means, let me write this here, white one. That would mean that the surface is no more than 0.5 millirem per hour for, again, that is a surface. So that's when you do your white test and your surveys. And then at one meter away, for all three of these, you're gonna be doing those tests and that should be background. So we have white one, now we have yellow two. That is the next step up. Yellow two is surface shouldn't exceed 0.5 to 50 millirem per hour. And at one meter away, it should not exceed one millirem per hour. And the only difference would be right here, we have a radioactive two for yellow two and the top of the diamond would be yellow. And then finally, we have our yellow three. And the same test, surface should not exceed 50 to 200 millirem per hour. And for one meter away, it should not exceed one to 10 millirem per hour. So those are the three designations, and again, they determine the caution in handling the material. So next, you may see a little box here and in the graphic, and we wanna know what is a transportation index and where does it go? Well, I kind of spoiled it, and the transportation index goes in this little box. And that transportation index, they call it TI often, that's the reading at one meter in millisievert per hour multiplied by 100. But if you do that, essentially what you have is a reading in millirem per hour. And again, it goes in this little box. And this seven, as you see in all shipping labels for radioactive material, that is the category of the hazardous material. So if you're handling HDR sources or loose seeds, that is radioactive byproducts. So you'll always see a seven right here in that shipping label. So if you do a leakage test, first, how would you do that for a package that you receive? And what values would you anticipate for a alpha or beta emitter? So 
To do a leakage test, simply again, if you've done them, you know it's very simple, but it may be a question on part three, you're asked, even the most simple questions could catch you off guard and it just kind of unsettle you for the rest of the exam. Simply do a wipe test. You take and you wipe the, the surface of the material and what's being held in it for alphas, you want 22 uh, disintegrations per minute, and that's for CM squared as well. That is the max number that you can have. And if you have uh, beta emitters, or if you have gammas, we want 220 DPM per centimeter squared. And finally, all of these rules that we just discussed, a very good reference for that and one I would strongly recommend highlighting if you do get this on an oral exam would be 10 CFR 71. So I always love to reference the resources, whether you know the answer or you don't. It lets you know that you know where to look if you do have a question. And this is simply for radioactive packaging, shipping, and receiving. So I hope this helped. If you have any questions, please comment in the uh, comments below and have a great day.